Good morning, GPM. I hope that you guys had an awesome 4th of July weekend. Uh, just before we get started, a couple of announcements. Let's all get out of our beds, get on our Sunday best, find our Sunday space so that we can worship the Lord together. Concentrate and stay focused. And before we begin, here is, and would you join with me, a time of praise with John and Kayla. Here I am, down on my knees again, surrendering all, surrendering all. Find me here, Lord, as you draw me near, just before you. Desperate for you, I surrender. I surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. Drench my soul as mercy and grace. Like a rushing wind, Jesus breathed with me. Lord, have your way, Lord, have your way in me. Like a rushing wind, Jesus breathed with Lord. Like a mighty storm, stir within my soul. Lord, have your way, Lord, have your way in me. I surrender, I surrender. JPM, welcome to another day of Sunday Youth Group at Home. I'm so glad that each and every one of you guys are tuning in and joining us as we worship God together. Now, I know it's been a many weeks since we've seen each other face to face, and I so dearly wish we can meet face to face and to worship together. But for the safety of you and your family and the people that we love, we're asking you guys to just 
stay home a little bit longer and let's let's make it even more special that we get to see each other soon and to hope for that future when we can do so. Uh, so without further ado, let me pray and jump right into the Word of God this week. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for His time and opportunity. Lord, as we gather together at different times and in different places, we we know with confidence that it is the Holy Spirit that is bringing us together as we worship you. Lord, as we continue to read and to explore the Bible and you continue to reveal yourself to us, help us so that we could live and love like Jesus did. And we ask the Holy Spirit continue to empower us and to strengthen us to be able to make it through this day, through this week, and through this pandemic as well. Lord, we continue to pray for this world around us, our country, and our country and our city. Lord, would you continue to give wisdom to our leaders and our medical professions as well. In all of these things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we're continuing on with our hero series. Now today's the last week where we'll be exploring who God has made us and how God has made us and who he made us to be. And today in order to get that idea a little bit, let's think about the last time that you fought with someone. Maybe it was last week, yesterday, or even just five minutes ago, you were yelling and screaming and fighting with someone. Or maybe it was your best friend, maybe it was your brothers or sister, or maybe it's perhaps your parents. And who knows? Just think about that for a second. And think about a time when you had a fight with someone, but because of something silly, or because of something that was ridiculously out of this world, that you guys just laughed about it and you guys just brushed it off. And I, 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 I had this experience when I saw Simeon, right? He's playing in GP24 and he's playing and he, he gets into a fight with his friend because he, they want to both play with the same type of toy. And they're yelling and kicking and screaming and you take them apart for a second and, and then you bring them back together and next thing you know they're best friends they're giggling and they're laughing and they're, they're showing each other like funny lego blocks that they made it, it's absolutely amazing what laughter and funny moments can do right you you and your best friend could be the worst enemy but then because of something funny because of something silly you guys just laugh and you guys are best buddies once again right so things like that can happen between the argument uh, but sometimes, right, a joke or a silly thing isn't enough. Something we need to, sometimes we need to work harder to reconcile with somebody that we care about, right? Oftentimes we think about heroes saving the world in big, amazing ways. They stop a tsunami, they stop an earthquake, they stop an alien invasion. But you know what? Heroes can be courageous, strong, and compassionate when they are driven to make wrong things right in this world. And we could do that. And the best way to do that is by owning our mistake and reconciling and to build that relationship with somebody we've hurt. In today's passage, we're gonna explore a couple of passages where God does just that. Now there's plenty of places where God and God's people tells us how we should handle when we've hurt somebody else. And here in James chapter 5, verse 16, James chapter 5, verse 16, let's read this together. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. What James lets us know that reconciling with somebody that you have hurt, yes, it is hard work, but it is the key. It is the first step into the road of recovery, to healing that relationship once again. And here's what re reconciliation or building that relationship might look like for some of us. Uh, first, you apologize and you correct the hurtful things you said or did. Uh, and the other person will most probably uh, accept your apology. And they also share perhaps a hurtful thing that they said or did that escalated the situation uh, and the other person kind of reciprocates, accepts that and they share how they felt about each other in that circumstances. And once they found a common ground, their reconciliation is at work. Both people, both parties are trying to find out 
what their fault was with each other, not at e not you know at each other with themselves, to be a part of the recovery uh, in that relationship. And we continue on in Luke chapter ten. There's a bigger principle that is that that we are called to. There's a bigger principle of how we are called to treat each other, and so it's going to teach us and to allow us to think about who we need to reconcile with. And this passage relates to that person. right? So we're going to read in Luke chapter 10, verse 25 to 27. Luke chapter 10, verse 25 to 27. What has happened so far is Jesus is teaching amongst the land, and a law, the teacher of the law comes up and is trying to trap Jesus into saying something that would upset the authorities but Jesus was being, wasn't being fooled. So here, Luke chapter 10, verse 21, 25 to 27. On that occasion, an expert of the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus replied, what is written in the law? And how do you read it? And he answered, love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And... Love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. Right? So basically what this teacher of the law, this law profession professional is asking is, Jesus, how much can I get away with? What's the bare minimum I can do that I need to do to please God? But Jesus flips the question over and says that the way to please God is very, very simple. Love your neighbor as yourself. The way to do that is simple. But to actually love your neighbor is neither simple nor easy. Let's think about that for a second. Our natural question might be, who is our neighbor? And that's exactly what uh, this lawyer said, this teacher of the law said. Who is my neighbor? neighbor and jesus gave him a parable right the parable of the good samaritan and the idea is that this samaritan man he didn't set out to be a hero he one day was just going from point a to b and when he was on his way at the side of the road he simply saw a man who needed his help and the samaritan man he saw and he knew that he needed to help and he had what what he needed to help that person he had his hands and feet and his compassionate heart he got that person out of the ditch and into a into an inn and and asked that person to take care of him right his heroic actions was far from courageous far from like far from crazy it wasn't over the top or anything it was ordinary he was heroic in an ordinary way and have you ever seen someone in need before? What did you do? Did you ignore them? Or did you act as a Samaritan man did? Let, let's, be, let's be a bit more specific. Have you ever seen someone get hurt by your own words and your own action, but you ignored the problem and you didn't act to fix that hurt? And so far in this past couple of weeks, we talked a lot about how heroes act to right the wrongs, right? But all of the wrongs that we've talked about so far, the heroes didn't really create it. They were just there at the right time, at the right place um, to fix and to make things better, right? Heroes are known for righting wrongs, but sometimes the hardest wrongs to right is when we cause that wrong. Now, everyone Everyone wants to be a hero in a situation where things, the things they get to do is big and flashy, right? Their name just flashes across the billboard and they get recognition. When everybody notices and applauds, right? When they get all the glory and none of the blame, everybody wants to be a hero at that point. But you know what? Perhaps a real hero knows that the most heroic things happen when they're willing to fight for what is right, no matter how small it is. And they're, they're, willing, they're willing to fix the wrong that they have committed. And they're willing to do what is right, even if nobody notices and nobody knows and nobody finds out. 
right? Even if that means taking responsibility of your own work and taking responsibility of the wrongs that you have created, right? Real heroes know that in order to be heroic, you got to be heroic in ordinary ways. So let's think about that for a second. The same question that that lawyer, that teacher asked Jesus, who is my neighbor, right? For starters, your, your neighbors might be people that are physically next to you, your parents, your brothers and sisters, but it might be people you can't stand, or maybe somebody who you can't stand with. They have a different set of values, they have a different set of morals, they're just different from you. Or maybe your neighbor is somebody that you are fighting with right now, whoever it is and wherever they are. Or maybe it's a person you haven't talked to in a while because you're still angry and bitter and hurt because of what they said or did. But here's the thing, when we fight with our neighbors, it's easy to put up fences between them and us. Offenses like bitterness, anger, a silent treatment, guilt, fear, and revenge. And more time passes, these fences become bigger and bigger, and soon enough, we're going to see that there's no way that we could take those fences down. So what about you? Let's think about that for a second. Are there any fences that are separating from you and your neighbor or a neighbor? Right? What are some wrongs that needs to be righted? What are some wrongs that need to be made right between you and them to grow your relationship? Right? What fences do you have to climb over in order to reconcile with somebody that you have hurt? Now, maybe here's a few steps that might help you on the way to bringing down those fences. Um, number one, how do we reconcile with somebody that we have hurt or wronged? Well, number one, we need to admit uh, and apologize. Right? Don't make it all about you. Don't defend yourself. Don't tell them... Right? It's not about telling them how angry or hurt you were, but rather, number one, just admit that they perhaps did hurt you and that you perhaps hurt them. And then apologize. Right? It's about sharing what and how you felt at that moment and letting them understand. So this week, I challenge you to do something heroic. Let's choose to reconcile with that person, that neighbor that we have hurt. And let's right a wrong that we have created. And for you, maybe it looks like um, your friend. Uh, you said something that was hurtful, right? Um, and you're going to try to reach out to them, maybe apologize for the type of things that you said and the way you said them. right? When we can't see each other and where we're forced to see each other or to communicate through text, there are some miscommunications, right? Or, or maybe it's your parents. When we're stuck together in, in a small place, we're bound to have some friction. And in a way, maybe perhaps you should reach out and admit that sir, you know, the way that you have acted, the things that you've said has hurt them. And you want to reconcile and admit and apologize for those things. Now, I also want you guys to understand that apologies and admitting don't guarantee healing or don't guarantee reconciliation. You know what? Actually, your apology might get rejected or, or your relation might be beyond repair. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't try to do what is right. I know it's not going to be easy, and but that's exactly what we're talking about. God made us to be who we are. And sometimes we got to be heroic. We got to be brave and courageous. So as we wrap up this series today, let me recap what we've seen in the last couple of weeks and what we've talked about. Number one, heroes embrace who God made them to be. We got to see ourselves as beautiful creatures, beautiful creations that God has created in his own image. Number two, heroes care for the people that are right in front of them. Right? It, it, it isn't going to help much if you're talking about some people far away, thousands of miles away, when you can't even love the people that are right next to you. Right? And today, heroes are heroic in ordinary moments. It, it doesn't mean you, know, you aren't a hero because you saved 
uh, thousands of people because you did something absolutely amazing. No, you are a hero because you decided to climb over that fence and to love and reconcile your relationship with a neighbor. Heroes right wrongs. Heroes fight for justice. And that's exactly what Jesus came to do. And that's the mission that he has called us to be a part of. All right, so... Not only are you called by God, you are created by God to do just that. So how will you, how are you going to join God to save the world? And perhaps you could start that by doing something new, by reconciling, by doing something heroic in your life today. Well, thank you so much for joining us, GPM. Let me pray and let's wrap up our service. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time and opportunity once again. Lord, as we continue to explore the truth that you tell us, that we are created in the perfect image of God, and that with that it comes great responsibility to love our neighbors, to love our brothers and sisters. And Lord, and especially in this time when there is so much friction going on, we ask that you help us even more to do just that, to be able to love and to live like Jesus did. Lord, thank you so much for this time once again. And all of these things, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.